St George finished and we'd heard about this Mass in the Pura Clares. And it was just an amazing experience from the very beginning, mm -hmm. right through the last year. It's almost unbelievable that those 12 years are over, but we were so enriched by that time there. Mm -hmm. The most fantastic, it was the first the physical thing mm -hmm. of this beautiful little chapel, which was in a circle. Mm -hmm. And we were, the, the, we, the congregation, were at this half of the circle, mm -hmm. and the nuns were on the other half, mm -hmm. and the doors would close, but then they would open, and we were all one in that circle. Mm -hmm. Well, I moved here uh, 33 years ago and I was expecting a little girl and she was called, so I called her Clara. So I have a 33 year old daughter called after St. Clara and from that moment onwards this place became very special then and meeting the nuns. And I was very involved in helping Mother Pascal and the sisters to uh, collect the money and had lots of things in my own home. We had tombola, we had coffee mornings, we had donkey rides. The poor donkey got so tired of had to come to the back door to get a bit of bread. And it meant the world to me to, to sing here today and to be part of the whole liturgy. I grew up just across the road and the poor Clares have been in, really integral in my, in my upbringing and my faith and in growing up as a, as a young person in North Belfast. And it's just been a privilege. It's very uh, touching and emotional as well and difficult, but uh, it's been a wonderful experience and a, a wonderful to sing with, as well with Father Eugene and Father Martin and the rest of the musicians and the singers. When she came to die, St. Clair, born into a life of ease and luxury, dying in utter poverty, surrounded by her sisters, did not view her death as a disaster or a failure. Instead, she said quite simply, Thank you, Lord, for having created me. Because during the terrible years of the Troubles that so many of you lived through, this place was the axle at the centre of well-worn spokes that came from all sides. People arrived here to seek consolation, to unburden themselves. And they left eased by a kindly year and the assurance of prayers, perhaps a little prayer card or a holy picture. This place, this prayer-filled house, was an oasis of silence in the midst of a turning and hurting world.
and in the Diocese of Dun and Connor and in Northern Ireland. And on behalf of all Christian communities and churches here in this city and its uh, surrounding areas to thank uh, the sisters and their predecessors who have passed to the risen life of Christ. Grandmother, but we'd have sent them up eggs, you know, in the 40s uh, from County Derry, you know, uh, and wrap, uh, wrapped them up in straw and parceled them. And, uh, so, and of course, they were vegetarian, they didn't oh, eat meat, know. they didn't eat meat, Ms. Martin. Uh, uh. Well, it means a lot to me because see, when I arrived here in Belfast, they are the one who inspired me, you know, during my uh, depressing days and stressful moments here you know when you just arrive here it's really difficult you know you have nobody your family is away from home you know and i don't know best uh, the best in belfast or the best in ireland and the singing priests have many fans in the philippines <laughs> And they're very, they're very sweet. constant uh, presence of helicopters. The helicopter pad was so near to us, rising and landing and searchlights and everything. But the, this was a, that was the, the, the external part of what I suppose, the, the wonderful people. People came here from all directions, you know, and especially those people who had suffered uh, tragedies in their own families, shootings, deaths. From a distance, the world looks blue and green, and the snow-capped mountains white. From a distance, the ocean meets the stream, and the eagle takes to flight. Yes, and we're very happy and very privileged to have Sister Pasch and Sister Mary with us here. And it's wonderful. And thank God and for it. And it echoes through the land. It's the voice of hope. It's the voice of peace. It's the, the voice of so There's a special name for them. Those that, you know, it's spread out from a distance. We all have enough, and no one is in need. 
and there are no guns, no bombs, and no disease, no hungry mouths to feed. From a distance, we are instruments marching in a common band, playing songs of hope, playing songs of peace. They're the songs of every man.